You can just go ahead and lurk. You don't have to say anything, and that's totally okay. It's a Thursday evening. The agenda for tonight is to continue working on Char Zaku 2 V2, the Master Grade. Lashbrook is here. Hello, Lashbrook. Um, we have uh, we've gotten uh, Ghost Valve is here. Welcome, Ghost Valve. We've gotten some progress done here. Chest, head, one whole arm, most of the other arm. Ghost Valve not only is here, but also subscribed to Tier 1, 32 months. So let's throw a Bear Cave Lego site, Tier 2 Blue Emote in chat. Also to thank Ghost Valve for that stunning achievement. Thank you very much, Ghost Valve, for your continued support. 32 is a whole lot of months. That's very, very cool. Thank you very much for all the love. Um, but yeah, so we're working on this kit. We got to finish the hands. Uh, and then we got to build the shield. No, wait, we built the shield. That's right. We got to build the other hand. And then we got to build the, um, like, other shoulder pad. The spike shoulder pad, basically. And then we can move on to working on the, uh, the feet uh, and then the legs. And I don't know if we'll get to it tonight, uh, but the annoying way that involves... Hey, guess what? I got springs to deal with here. I did a test of it. We got to put uh, little beads onto a literal actual spring. So that's, I was about to say fun. That's a thing that we have to do. That's uh, how we connect the legs there. So we'll get, we get to do that. Maybe today we'll get to that. I assume we'll get to that. Um, we're going to hang out. We're going to chat about a bunch of things and things. Um some good news, some not so good news, some wild news. Lord Cratchit, Lord Cratchit also subscribed to Tier 1 for 54 months saying, Hey, Pat, hope things are going well. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, Lord Cratchit, for that. Appreciate it. Let's throw the Bear Cave Lego site Tier 2 Blue Emote in the chat. And thank Lord Cratchit as well. That's 40, 54 months. I almost said 44. 54 months is so many goddamn months. Also, Lord Cratchit wants me to the dance button, which I will. And here we go with the old dance button. And also, hello, Aristofan, because Aristofan is here. Welcome, Aristofan. Welcome, everybody. Got a great crew already. Having a good time. Doing things up. What's up? We're chilling. Everything's cool. Um, my bit rate is fluctuating all over the ding-dang place. I know that uh, Twitch has been a little unstable for some folks the past couple days so hopefully the settings i have in ops won't lead to a disconnect but it might lead to things getting a little fuzzy which we don't love um but uh we're we're what how many days away from this we are we are a week and two days away from uh me being set up in a different room and we'll, we'll start working on this we'll start working on the hand as i talk about this for those that don't know what, what I'm talking about, um, towards the end of January every year, my folks go to Florida. They have a, uh, a timeshare uh, that they uh, partake in. So they're going to go to Florida and do that. Um, and I don't go with them because that doesn't make any sense for that to happen. So I hold down the fort. Uh, I mail them stuff and uh, uh, make it possible for, you know, just keep an eye on the house and do all that stuff. And then I keep doing my work. But because I'm alone here in this house, which is one story, it's just one story, but still, uh, it would be weird to just be here uh, all by my lonesome uh, without any uh, care in the world. Uh, what I end up doing is I move my entire computer setup, my streaming setup, which is my, this is my main computer and my work computer and my play computer and my streaming computer. It's all, it's all of my computer. Um, so what I end up doing is I take this into what we call the bonus room or uh, colloquial, colloquially termed down here. Um, I take it to the Carolina room. And so I get set up in the Carolina room and then this bedroom becomes just a bedroom where I just sleep at the end of the, at the end of the night. I just come in here and hang out. Uh, Lord Crash did is on a 20 stream streak. Excellent. Um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of streams. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't have a sound for that or an overlay thing that just shows up in the, uh, activity feed. Um, all right. So I need, that goes into two and then four and then the rest of these are four. So, uh, yeah, so I just move in there. 
Um, and then this bedroom becomes an actual bedroom. It is just a place that I sleep in, which is great for me, a person that just like enjoys that. And yeah, and you know, that, that way I'm using the house. I'm not just in here, cooped up in here all day by myself. I'm in another room all day by myself. So that's, that's basically what's going to happen there. Uh, and uh, the first stream uh, will be the 20th, 20th of January will be our first stream in uh, in that room. Why is this being so annoying? For whatever reason. The other hand, no issues, no problems, no sweat, no fuss, no muss. This one, being weird. All right. There we go. There's one finger done. Uh, okay, let's switch this. Why did I, why did I do that? Uh, we'll look at, we're going to work on the other thingies, and then we'll... Uh, We'll finish up this hand and then move on to working on the feet. Get that there. So we need nine. Is that there? Uh, but yeah, so that's coming up. So right now, oh, and when that happens, I should say, uh, things will be a little bit better on the internet wise because I will not be relying on Wi Fi and a Wi Fi extender, which I do the rest. So from towards the end of January until. Uh, like the first week in March, I will have a wired internet connection. Now it's obviously it's the same internet, but wired is certainly better than Wi-Fi. Uh, it just it, it is just going to be a it'll be a sm better experience, a smoother experience. Um, my upload speed will be a bit better, which won't really affect streams, but will affect the rest of my life. Um, one benefit of doing kuma bear your weekly anime recommendation is that that is those videos are under a minute by design they are they are short um in order to be you know counted as youtube shorts they got to be that length so under a minute uh so that for you know that is a technical challenge or, or production challenge to get in that time and, and keep everything together like that of course but it does allow for me to, um, for the first time in, in a long time, like upload very small videos, uh, which is nice, which saves on the old upload uh, of stuff, which is also part of the reason why I have been using the VODs here, um, uh, the, the street VODs. Uh, when, I, when I upload VODs to... Uh, to YouTube, I used to just do a local recording that was like good quality. It was like stream quality, but it was local recording. And my upload speed has been bad lately. And so to, to mitigate that, I've been exporting the Twitch VOD directly to YouTube. And that takes like longer to process, but it takes way less time than if I was uploading a video and letting it process as it uploaded, like I normally do. Um, so I just kind of do that and it, it works out pretty all right. And then I just go in and um, uh, edit the video after it's done uploading or processing. I edit the video and cut out the music from the beginning um, because uh, one, it's just like six minutes of music playing. That's not really fun at the beginning of a YouTube video. Um, but two, that way, if, if any of those music licenses change, I won't get the videos muted uh, on YouTube. So I just go in and delete that. It, I think, works out for the best. Uh, all right, we got to put on C11, and then this hand is done. We also need this part, so I can just take this out now, because we'll need this part to connect it uh, to the, or when we connect it to the arm. And then we got to build the shoulder pad. So G... Then I need C, which is this one. There we go. All right. And we'll also need this to connect it to the arm because I connected to the arm prematurely just for a photo. So I actually need this part as well. Let's do that. Um, there's a lot of stuff to talk about here. There's a lot of nonsense in the, uh, in the world of tech that we, we could certainly chat about here. Um, in no particular order. There's a lot of stuff. We should start with, we are on Twitch right now. I have talked about, you know, uh, I was just talking about, you know, the uh, the VODs and all that. Uh, we should mention that 
quite a few people were laid off uh, by Twitch. Uh, of course, our friend Mary Kish uh, was, uh, I shouldn't say of course, but Mary Kish was not laid off. Mary Kish still has her job. Uh, and But the number of people I know at Twitch has dwindled the past uh, day. Um, and that's a shame. This is not the same as the across Amazon layoffs that also affected Twitch last year. Um, this is a separate, apparently, apparently, Twitch only. Um, uh, and this is in many ways a response to their overhiring. Um, this, does, this is small comfort for the people who have been laid off. Uh, Happy New Year indeed, yes. Uh, this is small comfort for the people who have been laid off, but um, some... Now, hmm, how do I say this? The people who were laid off, sometimes it is first hired, first fired, right? Sometimes if you've been laid off, you are uh, you are new to the company. And other times it's not that, especially cost-cutting measures, uh, uh, you know, it's up to save money. You often try to find redundancies or reduce, and you might not be getting rid of the people that were there uh, you know, f for not that long because they don't cost you as much money as the people who've been there for a while or who perhaps are uh, months or days or weeks away from a, you know, getting benefits in a certain way or entering a different payment bracket or whatever. So sometimes those people get laid off because it would just, it just makes a life a lot, you know, the bottom line, moves better to lay those people off. Um, but the point I was going to make at the beginning of this was um, some of these jobs were added when all of these tech companies thought the sky was the limit for some weird reason. I mean, we know why. But um, yes, it is public jelly companies, infinite growth. You know, you got to keep making more money. Stabilization is falling behind yada 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 bullshit 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 um but some of the other parts of it is that certain uh entertainment properties or companies certain um uh media groups made a lot of fucking money when the pandemic started and people had disposable income at home because they weren't spending money on things like vacations and leaving the house and 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 they had because they didn't have commutes in some instances. Of course, this isn't everybody. There were plenty of people that just went on life and paid the price for that. But there were many people who were home and they had they didn't have a commute, right? So suddenly they had time for more media entertainment. So some of those companies had really awesome, substantial growth in those time periods, and they hired up. Almost as if the good times would never end, which is uh, uh, obviously not just, hmm, I should say this plain, as plainly as possible. It's not fucking 2020 hindsight for you to go, oh, you shouldn't have hired all those people because there would be a leveling out, if not a dip down again, a reset. This is like, though this is not the new normal, what are you doing? And, you know, and some people will say like, oh, well, of course, we know that now. It's like, no, we knew that then because that's what always happens when things suddenly are going well is that they correct themselves. Uh, so that's unfortunately what we're having here in a lot of instances. Some of it is uh, capitalism at its fucking finest. But some of, you know, some of it is a correction in many ways. That is uh, ill comfort for those that have been affected by this, of course. Um uh, Unity also a uh, huge amount of layoffs. Uh, that is certainly part of that is the new CEO has said, hey, there's going to be some layoffs as we try to figure this shit out. Um, which again, is not comforting to people to say that. Uh, that, hey, it's not your fault you've been laid off. We just fucked up so bad that now you have to not have a job so that we can hopefully keep going with our grand plans. 
Yeah, it sucks. All of it sucks. It sucks so much. I have nothing great to say about it. It just, it completely, totally sucks. Um, because we follow this stuff and we talk about this stuff, I also must mention to you, friends, that of course, the future of X is as a video first platform according to elon musk and x uh this is a the, uh i don't know if it's better or worse to lay people off before after the holidays so at the very least i would say in my opinion lord crashington right before the holidays is worse because it's the end of the year and it's also the end of the month and if your insurance only goes to the end of the month, you're looking at January 1st, not having insurance. Um, and if you get laid off on the 20th of December, no one will reply to your email. No one is posting job listings. No one is replying to uh, inquiries. No one is working. Um, better vibes for after because you get to enjoy the holidays. Yeah, you... Um, yeah, you also enjoy the holidays because you're not full of stress and all that. Obviously, starting the year off by being laid off sucks as well. There is no upside to this. It is different degrees of shit. Speaking of which, Elon Musk thinking that X is going to be a... So the idea of like, why why pivot to video? Or, or why say that this thing that started off as people being able to text each other, short short messages and posting about things. Why, why, why pivot to video? And the, the reason is because you can't mute or sorry, you can't skip an ad in a video. If they don't let you, you can't block an ad in a video. That's it. There's no other, there's no other, um, reason. Uh, advertisers understand ad, uh, video and they understand their place in video. Now, of course, part of the thing they understand is that um, their rates, the advertiser rates were uh, made up by Facebook and it caused a lot of people to just lose all their money. Um, just, you know, uh, and I don't know if Elon Musk knows that people, that that's a joke. Like, because his, his idea of humor is... is terrible um so i don't he does know about memes so he probably does know that pivot to video is a joke it's a sad joke based on a real thing that affected people a lot of people but i don't know if he comprehends that he's making that same uh terrible gaffe i don't know but basically they're just like hey you know, you'll get your ads and videos. Now, is there any way to make sure that the videos aren't anti-Semitic? No, I probably not. There probably aren't any ways to know that. Uh, and they'll probably do stuff where like, oh, well, you know, you pay this amount of money and it'll be ad free or there'll only be one ad in the video or whatever. And, uh, you know, view numbers, it'll be for this and that. And they'll, they'll, they'll come up with a bunch of ways to make this actually not good at all for them but um it is laughable and it is a thing where it's like i know that you want x to be this like elon musk wants x to be the everything website and uh, and that includes your banking and your entertainment like that you'll go to x to watch videos and to share photos and talk to people and read about stuff and uh, and and all that and do, conduct business. He wants it to be that site. Kind of forgetting that that, other than the banking part, that's what Twitter was. And it was already on the decline before he bought it for too much money. But it it's not going to get back to that. Like, it just isn't. It's, that's done. Like it isn't the every site. Um, and it's also just like, you're going to be able to post longer videos. 
uh, and you know, infinite scroll of videos and all this other stuff. And it's just like, come on, dude, come on, dude. It's laughable. It's, uh, unbelievable nonsense. It's, it's completely, uh, like it's like not going to work. It's just not going to work. It just isn't going to work. Uh, and of course there's somebody at X who spoke to uh, fortune magazine, uh, or for Frank's website, I should say. Um, I think it's way too early to declare us a video first platform. It's like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just, and he goes, we're just starting, this is Musk. We're just starting to add in video ads with a similar thing to YouTube where you can skip ahead after five seconds. Sure, 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 my guy. Sh sure, all right, okay. See, these are really popping out of here. All right, we're done with the upper body of this kit. This upper body is done. We're now moving on to the feet. It's time for this kit to get feet. It's important. Uh, Get ready for the exciting journey into the future of X. Yeah, it's going to be bad. Also, um, I don't know. A site that is that, that the major pro, pro, predominant feature of the site is like the list of stuff like are you going to open up a new tab and not refresh the page just to watch like a, a live stream? Like, I, I guess I don't, I just, it's just, it all seems so foolish. It all seems very foolish and nonsensical. I don't know. I don't, I don't have a good point there. Cause I don't think, uh, anyone at that company, anyone at that company that had any vision is long gone or is just keeping their head down and collecting a paycheck while they have a paycheck, I just don't think that there's anybody there who is, uh, has any idea of how to make that website any money or do anything there. Uh, okay. So we, we have to talk about this. Um, there are, uh, caveats to, uh, what I'm about to talk about here, but we should chat about it. We're going to talk about uh, SAG AFTRA's recent agreement. So, you've seen headlines, probably. You've seen tweets. You've seen uh, people being con concerned and confused. I've also talked about it a, bit, a bit on Twitter a little bit, or retweeted some people that I think um, have interesting th things to say about it. Um, short, short thing. SAG AFTRA has an agreement with a studio that deals with AI voices. SAG-AFTRA has not come to an agreement with video game companies overall about AI use, vo vocal use. They have made an agreement with a company uh, who, will who does negotiate on behalf of voice actors and studio and video game studios now the terms of that are bad just say that straight up they're bad they are not forward thinking they are not in people's best interests uh it, more if more and more companies uh game companies are going to be using replica studios interactive that is a bad precedent but i should say this is different from the uh possible strike that may happen with a number of game studios. You may remember that while the strike was still happening, the actor strike was still happening and the writer strike was still happening. There was a period there where um, uh, the voice actors uh, of uh, the, the voice actors involved in um, uh, SAG-AFTRA 
uh, voted to authorize a strike if one uh, is necessary. If uh, negotiations fall apart, they are willing to strike. Now, uh, as a reminder, that is with a handful of game publishers and studios and a few other companies that act similar to Replica Studios, a few that like do negotiations on behalf of other ones or are the go-between in contracts. Um, so that's just important to know that that's different. That, so this is not a comprehensive thing. I should also say lots of voice acting within games and animation is not a union gig. A lot of uh, voice acting is not union. There's also another voice actor guild or a, a, a guild for voice actors that is unrelated to SAG-AFTRA who have traditionally been very short-sighted in many instances with voice actors, traditional voice actors. Now, actors uh, and in general, the, the uh, improvements to contracts have generally come from people who are part of SAG-AFTRA for in other ways who also do voice acting. People who are generally just voice actors are, uh, well, one, pretty unhappy with how things are going here. And two, uh, a very small portion of SAG. This is a very, uh, it's SAG after, a very small amount of people involved in this. So I am not trying to sugarcoat anything. I am not taking the side of SAG after here. Uh, I care about unions, not necessarily union leaders. Um, but this is not, this is not saying, uh, that what happened here is, is not me saying, oh, well now all these things, this is precedent. Every game studio is going to do this. Guess what? Every game studio wanted this anyway. Game studios that are working with replica studios, uh, and SAG now have this agreement. Um, and basically their pitch is, Hey, this is going to be some payment. Like if you do a job and they want to use the voice that you recorded for them to record additional lines of dialogue via AI, they have to tell you they're going to do that. And you get to say no. And then if they do use that, well, then they got to pay you. So don't, so don't worry about it. Everything's going to be okay. It's all going to work out just fine because the studios are going to agree to these terms. And it's like, these terms are bad. These are bad terms and you should feel bad about going this far with them. Um, overall, they're, they're, they're not great. Um, uh, Fran Drescher has a, a bunch of bullshit lines here. Um, artificial intelligence has dominated the headlines and for most performers the best protection against the unauthorized digital simulation of their voice like this performance is a SAG after contract no it's not because most vo most voice actors are not union voice actors uh, and if you, anything besides don't is not good for voice actors in general again this is running G here I'm looking for G32, everybody. G32 and G33. And G32 and G33. Let's find them. There's 32 and 33. I found them. Um, uh, basically, th this fucking press release men mentions ethical AI. And that's all you really need to know about it. Uh, these people are not serious. Um our voice actor agreements ensure the game developers using our platform are only accessing licensed talent who have given permission for their voice to be used as a training data set, as opposed to the wild west of AI platforms using unethical data scraping methods to replicate and synthesize voices without permission. So basically they're like, hey, people sign these deals, these bad, because people sign these bad deals, it's okay. We're now giving you permission to do these things. It's, it's all good now. It's, uh, it's disappointing. Now, there have been some follow-ups and some conversations. Uh, again, this is this is in, this is important context that is not in the press release. 
Um, uh, then when asked for comment by a number of reporters who were like, hey, w what? What, 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 what are we doing here? Um, uh, a SEG Africa representative uh, had some other things to say, which I will get to in a moment here. Uh, the finalized deal with Replica is specific to Replica in building their 30 third party AI solution. So again, this is saying, hey, game developers, you, you want AI. You want to make sure your AI is cool buy a, your license your ai voices from us because every ai voice we have is you know signed a contract and it's cool um the performers would sign with them and be covered by them and the license to devs would require the protections and compensation to be carried through uh and again this is in place of saying fuck no don't do this this is them going well instead of saying fuck no we're countering with what about how about maybe which is obviously uh bad <laughs> obviously bad um let's see uh so yeah, the again it is more statements here in the meantime uh sag after says that they still uh need a bargain oh, i'm sorry i'm trying to get the right pieces here that i need I'm doing this slightly wrong and I've got to fix what I did wrong. And I'm doing that now, everybody. Don't worry about it. Everything's cool. Um, we still absolutely need a deal on the collective bargaining interactive media agreement, uh, which is, again, that thing that with the larger companies, again, not every game company, but way more than what is dealing with this thing. Uh, that is still ongoing. Um, uh, obviously, many developers want to use the same technology directly themselves. So they're basically, at the very least, I will give them credit. They understand that there are a lot of game developers who are not going to just go with Replica um, just because they have a deal. They're going to do the things their own way. Um, and hopefully those that work with union houses will have a contract. And again, um, anybody who is working in that industry already knows this, but anyone that is working on uh, anything right now where their audio is being recorded, um, anybody that is signing a contract has to be aware of that. And I would I would stretch this out actually now. It's important to say that if you were doing video work for anyone where your voice, your image, your likeness is being recorded, um, you have to be like, hey, don't sell my data. Don't sell this. Like, I think it's important, even if you're working with friends, having, uh, you know, and you're just doing a favor. I do know some people that are that are taking those steps. They are saying like, hey, uh, I am doing you this favor. You are recording my voice and likeness for a project. You cannot sell this information to other people. You cannot do that. Um, and I think that's only fair and only in, and makes sense. So I don't know it. There's a lot of this that is um, messy. Um, this did seem to come out of nowhere. The fact that it was, uh, I should also say, I haven't said this, this press release was uh, in part because of CES. And it's supposed to be like, hey, check out this cool technology. Um, and so that also comes across as like opportunistic and full of bullshit that they chose uh, that avenue to make this announcement. Hey, we, we signed a deal with ethical AI. And it's like, read the fucking room, everybody. Read the goddamn room. It, it's a mess. Um, two matches have been determined for Battle of the Belts. If you are... Uh, if you are a watcher of AEW programming, you may know that the, the uh, ninth Battle of the Belts is taking place this Saturday directly after Collision, and it will be live. So uh, if you were like, oh, cool, I'm watching Collision from 8 to 10, you could also watch from 10 to 11 uh, um, an episode of Battle of the Belts, where only one time 
Has a belt ever changed hands? Uh, Battle of the Belts is where every match is a title match. Sometimes those titles are AW titles. Sometimes those titles are other titles from other uh, promotions, including Ring of Honor, but also other promotions in just in general. Um, it is pretty cool, uh, except for the part where no title actually ever changes hands, and that's not as cool. Um, right now, there are two matches announced for it. Julia Hart is defending her TBS championship against Anna J. Anna J got the pinfall on uh, Dynamite. It makes some sense. Anna J is not going to win that belt on Battle of the Belts. It's fine. The other match where we might have our second ever title change. I should say there's been one title change and there was a uh, figure out who the interim TNT champion was. So there was a new champion, but it wasn't like someone lost the belt. It was just a match for the interim. Uh, so I, I should clarify that. So I'm not, you know, you understand what I'm saying with that. Um, but in this case, uh, it, it is good to note that um, I this could happen because of people involved. Ricky Starks and Big Bill, the AEW tag team champions who do not have a fun uh, name for the for their for their faction here they are just ricky starks and big bill their tag team does not have a fun name uh they are defending their tag team championships against chris jericho and sammy guevara who are collectively known as the sex gods but most likely won't be called that due to various allegations and nonsense Allegations about allegations. Uh, in Scuttlebutt, perhaps they will not refer to them as the sex gods and just Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. Now, do I think that Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara are going to win the tag belts? Honestly, maybe. I don't like thinking that. I would prefer they didn't. Um, I wish that uh, Ricky Starks was not once again trapped in the Jericho zone where you are just stuck with Chris Jericho for months and months. Um, Chris Jericho as tag team champion doesn't make a lot of sense, but putting a belt on Chris Jericho does bring in viewers. It is a proven thing. He's been world champion. He was the ring of honor champion world champion and that was certainly an interesting time in last year when that happened um so it's not the most bonkers thing in the world idea in the world to have him be a tag champion uh sammy guevara they they just want to be a baby face so bad they they work so hard to make him likable and it's very difficult because he has such a punchable face uh and his whole attitude seems like he sucks so i don't know but he does cool moves and people like those moves i don't think that they're going to win the tag belts but i think they have a that that it could happen i am i am not like i am not interested in betting against that is what i'll say where there are other things where i would certainly bet against uh, you know put money on the table i would not bet for or against that not that I've bet on wrestling because that's a fool's errand, but you know what I mean when I say that. It, it you know there are things to consider. There's always things to consider out there, uh, but that's not that's not one of them, in my opinion. Uh, that is an unlikely scenario, but it's still possible. Uh, and we don't know what else is going to happen that night. We'll find out uh, as they uh, as they get into it. Uh, one would imagine one to two more in an hour. You can do, you know, three or four matches in an hour. And again, that's after. All right, trimming this down here. We're working on the feet here. I got to get these pieces connected properly in the front here. And they're not snapping in place. And I don't know why. So that's always a good a, a good time when you're like, hey, this is just snap right in. Pause, pause, pause. Yep, this will just snap right in. 
pause, pause, pause. Any moment now, I'll just get these uh, spots here to snap right in. Struggle, struggle, struggle. At some point, it'll it, it has to work. Yep, that just snapped right in. Yep, indeed, Remy. It just it just hey sometimes it just works. All right, why don't why don't I try putting the top piece on here? No, that's just gonna that doesn't even connect to anything. That's just gonna connect to the bottom part there. So, okay. So these this spot here, and then where did the other one go? Okay, right. So this is gonna uh, you know supposed to supposedly fit right in here, snap in place, and then I'll put this on top. And it'll all lock together and be cool. But I got to get this bottom part to, to go in the right spot here first. And then it'll work. And we're not done with the feet here once I'm done with this. But okay, this actually snapped in place. The, the This went worked out. Now we can put the top part in here and get this. Great, we got one done. This foot is done. I can obviously panel line and all that, but whatever. It, it's, it's in. And now let's see if we can get the other one. Can we get this one to just do what it's supposed to Oh, yes. Okay, great. And now that'll go on and work. Hooray. And then before we build the ankles, because we got to build the ankles up, let's just quickly panel line this here because there's just some indent dots on this. Not too many panels that need panel lining. Uh, so, yeah, that's Wrestle Talk. Um I guess we should talk about the Young Bucks. Uh, the Young Bucks have been off TV for a few weeks. Uh, AEW Television, they're executive uh, vice presidents of AEW, as well as a decorated tag team within the company, uh, members of the elite. Uh, they lost their number one contendership to Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. And when they lost that guaranteed number one contender... They threw a tantrum and then left and they've been off TV and now they're back. And one was dressed all in white, very muted. And one was dressed all in black, very muted. No colors, no, no, uh, uh, any, any kind of fanfare. And they came back last night when, uh, Tony Schiavone was asking Sting, Hey, you know, we're coming up to your last match. Who's going to be your opponent? And then the Bucks showed up, making it seem like um, Sting's last match will be him and Darby Allen versus the Young Bucks, which is an interesting match. Uh, a bunch of people were just like, wait, one, well, one, I should say this. We don't know if that's what's going to be. There's still time between now and Revolution. Anything can happen. This could be all be a setup. This could be a fake out. They do it on Dynamite. Uh, they win, Darby's mad, Darby attacks Sting, that sets up that match, right? Uh, now, because a lot of people are like, shouldn't his last match be against Darby Allen and putting over Darby Allen? Uh, Sting has been undefeated in AEW. Shouldn't he win this, you know, shouldn't he lose his last match? And shouldn't it be to like, to help make someone, do the Bucks have anything to prove? Lastbrook says, not a match I'm interested in. For me, personally... I'm much more interested in a tag match. I don't I don't want to see Sting fight Darby because Sting should well, hmm. Sting should do the match he wants to do, right? I am there's no part of me that thinks that Sting is like being pressured into this match, this tag match. Uh because the Bucks Bucks versus Sting has are they've done it once. They did uh, a one-time-only reunited Bullet Club against Dudes with Attitudes, uh, which involved Sting. Um, so Sting has worked with the Bucks once before. The Bucks will sell all over the place for him. Uh, he'll be protected in a, in a tag match. There's no way this doesn't end with flair in the ring, right? So, obviously, the assumed thing would be Part of the reason that Sting loses the last match is because Ric Flair, one last time, turns on him and, you know, trips him up or sucker punches him or whatever. But also people were like, well, of course, there's no other way that there's no way this ends with anything except a one-on-one -on -one with Darby and Sting. Except that 
Sting has said in interviews, and people just thought he was, you know, not telling the truth, that he did not, he was not interested in facing Darby one on one. He doesn't want to fight Darby. Uh, is this the match that I would want to see? Not particularly. I think there's more interesting matches out there, certainly, than this. I think a uh, a tag team with more to prove in this world could benefit far better from this opportunity than the Bucks, who have, in my opinion, nothing to prove. Um, but if this is what Sting wants, I do think that is the most important thing. Uh, and also, I should just point this out. I don't mind the idea of the young Bucks have a win over Sting. I don't hate that as much as I would dislike the idea of Darby Allen having a win over Sting. As a known Darby Allen hater, I don't want him to have that accolade. I would much rather the Bucks have that accolade because that's cool. And because I don't hate the Bucks because I think the Bucks are fucking fantastic tag team. And heel Bucks are great. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not cool looking mustaches on the on the Bucks. Love it so much. Their mustaches look so terrible on purpose. I am such a big fan uh, of the bad mustaches from the Bucks. Very good. So yeah, that's what we're probably getting. There could be a swerve. We could be getting, uh, uh, you know, in a different direction. It's totally possible that this is not what a is actually what's going to happen. And then something else will happen. And there'll be just like some other match that gets built out of this because they do it, like I said, on TV because uh, they can't wait or whatever nonsense reason they come up with. It's totally possible that there could be something else. I'm not I'm not personally opposed to this. I do know that there are people who are and I hear you. I understand what you're saying. Is this the wrong piece? No, this is the right. So this goes in like this. These might not be H7. I may have. These are these might be the wrong thing. Uh, on occasion, I have been known to pull the wrong pieces out. This is H. I need H7. These are. These are not H7. These are another component in the legs. That's fine. We'll just put them aside and they'll be okay. We'll be okay, everybody. I uh, I recognize sometimes I just pull the wrong piece out. Um, if you missed Dynamite last night, there was some other stuff that I thought was kind of fun. Uh, MJF or, uh, you know, was nowhere to be seen because uh, we got our new champ out there. Uh, our, our new champ is, is doing his thing. Uh, he set up a precedent of basically Samoa Joe said, Hey, none of this just show up and get a title shot. You want a title shot, you approach the championship committee and you plead and you state your case. And then if they're cool with it, then then there's a match and that's how you earn your shot. And then a bunch of people showed up being like, "Well, I think I've earned my shot." And now now he's going to be facing um uh Hook, who has a lot of wins and only one loss um, uh, next week. And he's obviously going to win. I do not believe in a world where Hook w beats Samoa Joe uh, to become the new champion. I think that's very unlikely. Uh, Hangman wanting that belt back, I think, makes a lot of sense. Um I also think it makes a lot of sense for Swerve Strickland to want that belt. I think uh, my hope is that Swerve does not get an opportunity for a little while because um, Jack Perry deserves a title shot for beating Hook. I mean, Jack Perry beat an undefeated wrestler. One could argue that he does deserve some sort of opportunity. Yeah. I think that's reasonable that he should come back and want that. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want it to be sort of because 
basically, I don't want Swerve to lose this soon. Um, I would like Samoa Joe to have the belt for a while. Uh, I think Hangman doesn't lose much from losing to Joe. I think if that match happens, that's great. Um, uh, also, I think Wardlow... Well, one, I just... Wardlow... Uh, Wardlow Joe is not interesting to me at all. But Wardlow, I don't give a shit about. So Wardlow losing to Joe doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I'm amused Wardlow wasn't out trying to get in front of the line for title shots. Maybe Aaron Cole can cut the same promo for a fourth time. Well, look, they've only cut the same promo twice. So, yes, you also, it also was a little weird that um, Wardlow didn't show up in that I want a title shot stuff because he also wants a title shot. Oh, no, there was a social exclusive version. Oh, Remy, okay. Or, thank you, Remy. There was a There was another version of that same promo where they say the same things this faction like i in my opinion the undisputed kingdom is trying to be serious they are trying to be oh well you know how roderick strong said a bunch of goofy stuff and he was yelling at adam and he was going samoa joe um oh yeah remy i can't uh you can't have you send a link in there since i'm a one-man operation I do not have mods. I do not allow links. But thank you for letting me know. I will investigate that on my own. Um, uh, but I think they're trying to make it like they're trying to jump from. Hey, remember when all these people were goofy? Like at one point, uh, Matt Taven was like, who walks around with a giraffe? Are you serious? Like. No, you were being unserious. And so I think they're trying to overcorrect from, oh, well, us being like that was just a, a a bit because we're actually very hard and serious because we were being evil this whole time and pretending to be goofs. But it's like, no, I know that Matt Taven is a goof. I know that Roderick Strong is a goof. That's the kind of wrestlers they are when they work best is when they are fucking goofs. So this does not read true to me at all. Um, it just comes across as, Oh, you just, you want them to be taken seriously, but like they're not serious people. So I think they don't want to be like cool and fun heels. Uh, Cause that's bang, bang gang, right? Bang, bang gang are, um, Jay White and he and his being surrounded by evil dumbasses, uh, different degrees of, of dumbass, but all evil dumbasses. He's surrounded by evil dumbasses, and I think they don't want that for this faction. They want undisputed elite to be uh, no, elite, undisputed kingdom to be like seriously uh, uh, mean evil guys. So they're doing. Like, uh, because to Tony Khan, there's nothing more serious than wanting to win belts. That's when you show how serious you are, is when you are dedicated to winning titles. There is no other, there's nothing more serious than wanting to win championship gold. So that's all they can say right now is, we want to win the gold. We want to win and be champions, and all of us are going to be champions Forget for a second, I guess, that two of us are already champions. Because Roderick Strong is going to win the international title. Why? Why Why doesn't Roderick Strong also want the world title? Why is Wardlow going to win the world title and give it to Adam Cole when he's uh, well again? What? Why doesn't, Water, why doesn't Roderick Strong want the world title? What? Oh, okay. So it's just like, it just doesn't work as well right now because none of it makes or feels like it uh, it rings true at all. Um, so I do think that they need a bit of a course correction. And I understand not wanting to be the goof faction or the faction with goofs, but you've got goofs in your squad. You've got Bennett and Taven and Roderick Strong 
and they can be fucking incredibly goofy. You've already got that. You already got a goof troop. I don't know why you're pretending like you don't have one. It is a real goof troop. And Adam Cole can play all kinds of dirtbag. Adam Cole should be clear, and he is to a certain extent, clearly acting like he is. he's clearly using all of them. Uh, and that's great. And then Wardlow is just fucking Wardlow now. He's just Wardlow again. And I honestly think that's fine. I think uh, sweatpants, sweatshirt, bad looking hair, Wardlow is an improvement over our previous Wardlow, which of course was power bombing people and then walking away because you knew you were going to win and not even like acknowledging the fans and just like being a pouty guy who went away for a bit and came back like that Wardlow sucks. This Wardlow is at least something. But it's never going to win a world title, Wardlow. And I don't mind that because I'm kind of over war. I'm kind of done with Wardlow. I've been done with Wardlow. I think they fucked it up and I don't think they can get it back because what? What's the what's the end game for Wardlow? Turning face because he's tired of Adam Cole? Like, I know that wrestling is just a repetition. This is just... Virgil. This is Virgil all over again, but it also is Wardlow. It's not even that he's playing a trope in wrestling that we've seen before, which is okay because that's all fucking wrestling is. It's a, that he's playing a trope we've seen before with the same fucking guy. We've already seen this happen to Wardlow. It's very strange. It's very strange. Uh, whatever. I really do. I want, I want, um, the acclaimed and the bullet club gold actual faction thing to happen. It's being teased right now. Do I think this is good for the acclaimed? No, I don't think, I don't think anything with the trios belt is good for the acclaimed. I think the claim should be a tag team without Billy Gunn. I think this is fun because I want Billy Gunn to be in Bullet Club. I want Billy Gunn to be an offshoot of the Bullet Club, which is just a parody of the NWO, which started off, as you say, as a parody of the NWO and, uh, and DX. And I want a member of DX to be in an offshoot of the Bullet Club because that is terrible in a way that i love uh, that is something that i can really get behind in a really nonsense thing that shouldn't happen uh so i would like that to happen also i want a bull billy gun to turn heel side with his sons with the bullet club and be the old man in the bullet club gold and then uh the acclaimed can go and do other things that don't involve that at all uh because I think that's best for them. Uh, I, once again, I would like them back in the tag team division doing tag team wrestling, which I think is what's best for them. All right. So how does this work? This snap on there. I don't know how this snaps on. I got to see how these snap on here. It snaps on like that. And that goes in like that. All right. And then this must be above it. I go in like that. I'm not convinced I know where this piece goes here. Hmm. All right. I'm not fully certain I've done this correctly, but we'll find out when I go to put on the other parts after the pause for the cause. That's right. We're not doing it right now, but we will do it soon. Uh, I'm going to take an opportunity to talk to you about uh, various things and things in the world uh, going on with me. Um, all of the things I'll be talking to you tonight are optional. You don't have to do any of these things, but if you would like to, you're more than welcome to. 
I would love it if you would be interested in at least observing and learning about it and then maybe doing it if you're so inclined. If you are currently a subscriber to the Build With Our Workshop, you can throw the barricade, the Lego, the site, the tier two blue emote in the chat. Being a subscriber is the easiest way to support what I do here through cash money, your prime gaming token, perhaps. Uh, we had some renewed subscriptions, which is rad. Um, so if you'd like to become a subscriber, you're more than welcome to do that. Again, through cash money or your prime gaming token. Uh, you could gift a sub. We've had zero gifted subs this month, which is okay because uh, the big push comes later. But, you know, if you want to become a subscriber, you could do that. Um, uh, and gift a sub anonymously or take credit. Uh Cheer is always appreciated. You could join Harold on the cheer leaderboard if you want to do that. Um, those are all the ways to support me directly here through uh, Patreon. Or sorry, through Twitch. But I also have a Patreon. That's what I was about to say. And you can subscribe to my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Pat Bear. There's a $1, $3, $5, and $10 tier. There are different rewards for different tiers. And I would suggest you jump on there. Check that out. See if there's something there that you'd like. Um, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Pat Bear. Over on my YouTube, you can subscribe for free, and please do, because I make videos over there, and you might like some of those videos. While you're there, consider becoming a member. Now, what does membership get you? $2 a month as a member. You get my Wednesday videos a day early, and my new video project is pretty fucking good. So you'll be able to see that before other people get to see it. So consider doing that. Uh, and then I'm so close to getting a payout from YouTube. And when I get a payout, I'm going to use that hundred dollars to buy model kits. So it feeds back into this, uh, iron hide the fourth coming in with a pun. I used to be a farmer. I quit because the salary wasn't high enough, but um, shh, thank you. Iron hide the fourth. Um, I'm talking about ways people can support the channel. If they're so inclined, all these are optional. Now, uh, I talked about a bunch of ways to support me on a monthly basis. There are other ways to support me, of course, which involves uh, a direct donation, if you're so interested, a one-time, maybe, to my coffee or my PayPal. Everything I get through direct donations, through YouTube, which includes AdSense, so watching my videos, through Patreon and through Twitch, all goes into a fund, and with that fund, I buy model kits. This kit that I'm building right now, the big friend here, Charzaku 2, version 2, Master Grade. I'm only able to build this because of your generosity. Uh, past you is helping present me build this. I have a backlog full of wild, fun things that I would love to build. Uh, there's one way to skip the queue. If you have something you'd love to see me build and you don't want it to wait, uh, do not worry about Iron Hide the Fourth. I am always comfortable with pausing my ad read stuff to interact with chat if necessary. Um, but I have an Amazon wish list. You can check that wish list out and see if there's something there you'd like to see me build. It'll jump the queue, become the next thing that I work on. Uh, so take a look there. I've got Lego sets. I got model kits. Hey, uh, I thought I had built everything from Witch for Mercury. I was pretty sure I had built everything. Turns out uh, I haven't built the Gun Volva. The Gun Volva is uh, a another you know grunt kit. Uh, and I, I I realized, hey, I didn't build this kit. Uh, you would know because I would have had to say Gun Volva a bunch of times. I haven't built that kit. Uh, so that's on my wish list. Uh, so you could buy that so that I have to build it. Uh, and I'd be happy to build it, of course. Uh, but I got inexpensive kits, expensive kits, kits that go on sale all the time, kits with free shipping, kits without free shipping, some gear at the bottom if you uh, feel like you want to help me out uh, so I can keep myself supplied with cool gear to keep building. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there, and I'd be happy to work on any of that thing. It wouldn't be on my wish list if I wasn't at least slightly interested in building it. I get that question on occasion. People are like, well, what do you don't, what, what's on your wish list that you don't want to build? And it's like, it wouldn't be on my wish list if I didn't want to build it. Um, I have a throne wish list. That's my alternative to Amazon. Uh, throne an independent company with a wish list. Uh, you can check that out. I got to update that. I always say that every couple weeks. I got to update that. I do. I need to go through and and up to that. And then USA Gundam Store is the most convoluted way to support me. If you want to support me through a small business like USA Gundam Store, a big small business, you go to there, you get a gift card. They send you an email with the gift card code. Then you send me a whisper here on Twitch, a DM on Twitter with that gift card code. And then I use that to buy something from USA Gundam Store. 
And you'd be like, Pat, no one's ever done that. More people have bought me gift cards to the USA Gundam store than have used Throne, a wish list provider. Like a service where you just go, eh, all right, yeah, okay, eh, here we go, okay. And then you then something goes to me in the mail. And more people have done, I'm going to buy a gift card and then send Pat a whisper on Twitch with a gift card code. Like more people have done that. So even though it's the most convoluted way to support me, it still gets used. Uh, if you want to support me and not spend any money and you didn't know about this, I have a Discord and you're welcome to come hang out in my Discord. I post a build photos at the end of every stream there. People post stuff they're working on. Uh, my Discord is full of lovely folks. It's a nice little place and you're welcome to come hang out there. That's nice, my nice little quarter of the internet. I have a couple video links to share with you. Uh, we will have a new episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club up on Monday. But currently, the most recent episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club is me talking about the fall season from the end of 2023 and the new anime season that started up this month, uh, the uh, winter 2024 anime season. So I'm talking about those two seasons, talking about anime. Check that video out. It's long and informative. Um, Ironhide the fourth. We'll get back to this. Uh, we'll get back to the build uh, after a little bit more chatting. But we are currently working on Char Zaku Two Version Two, a master grade from 2007. We're working on the legs. Uh, it's leg day there. Um, but just a couple more things I got to just mention. Then we'll get back to building. Kuma Bear is my new weekly video project, uh, and I'm excited to talk to you all about Kuma Bear Episode Two came out yesterday. Kuma Bear is uh, short form uh, content here uh, that I'm doing on YouTube and my Instagram and my TikTok. It is anime recommendations in under a minute. Um, and uh, the second episode is me talking about one of my favorite series from the end of last year and a series that continues this year that I'm really enjoying, Freerin Beyond Journey's End, which is fucking fantastic and you should watch. Uh, it's on Crunchyroll and I, you know, I spend a minute, a little under a minute, telling you why I think it's awesome. So check that out. Okay. I have now talked about all the things I need to say here. I'm going to chat about some anime. Uh, we're going to keep working on this model kit. We're working on the leg. We are close to, we're, I, we might finish this leg by the end of the stream. We'll, we'll see how we do there. Uh, but before I can get deep into anime talk, I do have to drink some water, and dramatically transition back to the overhead camera. Here we go. <sighs> All right. Let's, uh, let's talk about some anime here. Now, uh, two small announcements before I get into the villainous. One is... Um, Dora Hidoro is getting a second season that was on Netflix. If you have Netflix, please check out Dora Hidoro. Uh, that is one of the most gorgeous, violent anime I've seen in, in many, many years. It is unbelievably beautiful in its complete, like the vibes are depressing, but, and violent, but also incredible. It came out in 2020 we are getting a second season. Um, that is wild. Uh, there is a teaser image out. Um, it is in production. We do not know who is working on it. If it's the same company, when it's coming out, we just know there's going to be more. Another season of Dora Hidaro. And that is fantastic news. Uh, and my only hope is that the landscape of anime has changed enough that it will not be in prison. Uh, it was in Netflix jail where it came out in Japan, uh, but because Netflix had it and didn't want to release it weekly, it, it waited until all the episodes were out and it all came out at once, uh, which is annoying. It was very annoying that that is the, the method they chose to release that show. So my hope is, and since then, Netflix has done weekly uh, so the hope is this would also get a weekly release if Netflix picks up season two. And I honestly kind of hope it does because it's weird to recommend a show where you're like, Hey, you should watch this show. 
um, you got to go to Netflix for the first season. And then the second season you watch weekly on, you know, high dive or whatever. Like I, I would hope that honestly hope that Netflix picks it up again just for some, uh, you know, so it's a group together and you can just watch it all together. Uh, the other small bit of news is, hey, uh, there is an anime that I am not going to be covering weekly here. Uh, I watch a good amount of anime that I don't talk about here on a weekly basis. I got to check in now and again. Uh, mostly I kind of enjoy it or I don't or watch it like, you know, every couple episodes I'll watch again. But I'm not like out here really uh, uh, following it on schedule. I'm watching it on my own schedule for my own enjoyment. Uh, and that is also the case here for Cherry Magic. Uh, Cherry Magic is a, uh, a series that up until it, the first episode came out this week had not been announced. Crunchyroll likes to do that sometimes where they don't announce their entire slate. Sometimes they just a thing comes out and it's like, oh, no, we have that. Uh, and you're like, oh, good. Uh, Cherry Magic is the story of a dude who uh, the an old saying in Japan is when you, if you turn 30 and you're a virgin, you can develop magical abilities. You become a wizard, uh, which is, you know, an insult to virgins, mostly uh, a a colloquial. Um, In this case, it does happen to our main character who does develop psychic abilities. And that psychic ability allows him to find out that a dude is interested in him. A very put together cool smart attractive dude is interested in him and that leads to a romantic comedy called cherry magic uh and it's i'm very excited about that it got picked up so i'm going to be watching that in my own time i've watched uh, episode one already and i can tell you that it was it was good it's good it's good uh i'm excited for it because we don't have a lot of queer entertainment out there um Queer romance shows are like are certainly more likely than just like oh yeah there's a there's a drama and one of the characters is queer uh, generally like that doesn't have as much but you also don't get weird queer shows that often and I don't want to say this one is like super weird but it does involve psychic abilities and that is weirder than like I don't know. A, ba- a group of guys form a band and two of them fall in love with each other, which is a, a f- fairly seminal recent uh, gay story uh, out there. But like, yeah, this one, I- I'm excited about it. Um, Iron Eye the Fourth. This is a master grade from the year 2007. It is trying a lot of cool shit. Some of it is very successful. Some of the uh, the inner frameworks are are done very well, and I'm uh, I'm very pleased with. But I can also tell you that uh, some of it is not great. I will ring the bell. I'm going to ring the bell. The bell has been rang. Thank you for using your channel points on my physical bell. Um, yeah, some of this is not particularly great because uh, it's trying some stuff like. Uh, no one, no one in Bandai, in, 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 in the Bandai model kit department, I don't think anyone's ever fully been happy with the beads, the two beads. Uh, what do you do? Do you make it fixed where they can't move? Do you just make it one piece? Is it rubberized? Is it partially rubberized? Do you do separate beads and then you have to feed them through? Uh, a, a, a piece of metal or a piece of plastic that's, you know, like, how do we do it? How do you do it? Uh, their solution here is you have the beads on their its own, like, applicate thing, and then you have to slide them off of it onto the part that you want to install. And it's bad. It's not good. We'll come to that. We're going to get to that at, uh, soon. Soon we will get to that. Uh, where I have to uh, put all this together um, and do my best with it. Uh, But it's, um, 
this is not my favorite application of uh, the, the the nozzles and tubes, I will say. Uh, I think I prefer just the, it's just hard plastic. It's none of it's rubber and it's all one piece and just fits in and there's not a lot of give. I think I am most interested in that as a solution. Uh, and the other solutions don't really work for me personally. Um, so yeah, so some of this, it, look, it's a, it's a, it's good. It's a good detailed master grade. It just, there are parts of it that I'm not as pleased with. Um, thank you for the follow Corvus, uh, oculum. Appreciate that. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the old, uh, build with bear workshop. I build model kits here Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, 9 PM to 11 PM. And on Tuesdays, I do other things that are not model kit building, but I still stream on Tuesdays at 9 PM. So uh, thank you for reading the follow button. I hope you come check out a stream. Uh, we are we are on our way to finishing this leg. So we're making our way through the leg here. Now, um, now that I've talked a bit about this kit, and of course we always pause, uh, it's time to talk about anime. And I'm going to put this back in here. Uh, I've talked about the two shows that I just want to chat about. Uh, Dorodoro getting more episodes. Wild. And uh, uh, Cherry Magic being picked up, uh, which is great. But now it's Villainous Night. It's time to talk about the Villainesses. I have two anime here about Villainesses. Uh, one is a re reincarnation isekai about a girl who is uh, the hidden boss in an, isek uh, in, a, in an Otoma game, a world based on a, uh, you know, a dating game. Uh, video game uh, and the other is a girl it is not an isekai but it is a reincarnation time loop story where the villainess uh, is on her seventh go of life she has died six times and is on the seventh go and maybe this time will be the time where she doesn't die at age 20 uh, we'll see um so that is, wait, uh, that goes like that. That goes like that. Yeah. All right, great. Put those on. Uh, now I need I. Um, so let's start with Villainous Level 99. I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the demon lord. Now, for a moment, pretend like you did not read along or listen to me tell you the name of this anime. Just for, just for shits and giggles. Pretend like... As I describe this anime, you have not heard me talk about it. And you're just going in of like, oh yeah, here's another fantasy anime that Pat's going to talk about. And you don't know that the title of this is Villainous, Villainous 99. I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the demon lord. We open on a pink-haired girl. She's a commoner. Her name is Alicia. And she's arriving at the Royal Academy. It's rare for commoners to be there, but she's there. Because she uses healing magic. And she's trying to get to her dorm the day before uh, uh, the opening ceremonies. But she's having trouble getting to the dorms. And she has some shenanigans where she meets three different, very attractive, very well-to-do. One is a prince. Uh, the other is, the, uh, is a very strong uh, uh, guy who is, I, I believe he's the son of a, a duke. And the other one is the son of the uh, the the prime minister. So they're well-to-do handsome boys and they have different personality traits that are very plain to see. And they all have positive interactions with our main character, Alicia. Uh, and at the end of this scene where she's introduced all these characters, a, uh, an animation begins to play that feels very reminiscent of dating games, Otoma games. Uh, which is playing off the whole vibe of this anime. You've got your you know, main character. You've got uh, eligible, handsome men who all are going to uh, in enjoy spending time with her and getting to know her. Uh, there's some other characters like Patrick, guy who goes to school. And you're like, oh, that's a sub character named Patrick. Cool. That is a character. I'm not just saying that because my name is Pat. Uh, that is a character in this anime. Um, and there are various other uh, characters like, Oh, at one point we see the name uh, Yumela, Yumiela, Yumiela, I should say, 
uh, who is the villainess. And you're like, oh, no, the villainess. She's going to bully our character, which will in turn make it easier for the other, the guys to take pity and want to help her. Uh, so because this is a, a dating game anime. Uh, and so it goes through the motions there. We get that opening. Uh, and then uh, she goes to um, uh, the uh, ceremonies here. Uh, she runs into uh, Yumiela, who she is scared of because Yumiela gives a, she's like dark haired, which nobody else is. And she has, uh, she's kind of like soft spoken and just apparently trying to uh, be by herself. But she gives off a vibe that our girl Alicia doesn't quite uh, love. And then we see a future scene from the video game, like a scene from the video game uh, where Alicia and the young men fight and defeat Yumiela, who was the hidden final boss of the game. She's evil. and She was the last boss. And then we pull out to realize it is a video game. And there is a girl from Earth playing that game. Who is Yumiela? Got you. This isn't about Alicia, the pink-haired uh, healer, commoner girl, the main character of the dating game. The main character of our story is the villainous, the final hidden boss. You knew that because you knew the title of it. But, y'all, I've read this manga uh, this is a manga I really enjoy. I've been looking forward to this anime adaptation. Uh, this is in the light novel, apparently, but not in the manga. And I think it's such a fun framing to like, even even if you know the title, even if you know this isn't what the story is, to have this kind of like fake out of the main character, I think is such a fun way to start this off. Because it instantly makes these characters um, like... I don't know. It just it makes it makes me appreciate them a little bit more because they are given a even a, the chance to have any kind of uh, character uh, at all. Because we all know that they are not going to be important enough because they're not the main character. Again, our main character is Yumiella. Um, at age five, she awoke to the memories of her other life. She died, she was hit by a truck classic hit by a truck and died excuse me i don't know where this goes oh this goes like that what happened here we got raided thank you maverick art guard thank you raiders welcome we are working on uh char zaku 2 version 2 from 2007 a master grade hello uh yeah we're working on the zaku 2 v2 um we are almost done with a leg in that, I mean, we have a lot more to do on this leg, but we are getting close to being done with this. Uh, I'm going to jump this step here, get, get a foot working on here. Uh, and I'm also talking about some anime. Uh, I'm talking about the first episode of Villainous Level 99. Uh, Nick was uh, nice. You were just working on the real grade Al, uh, oh, Ale Strike Gundam. Nice. Yeah, I like the Ale Strike. I don't love the Strike, but I think the Ale is fun. Uh, I think that's a fun enough kit, but the strikes, like, I don't, you know what it is? I think I just worked on too many strikes and too many freedoms. I've just done so many variations of that kit, uh, that I might've hit my ceiling on that, but that, but I do remember that being a solid kit. Uh, and you know, I like a real grade. I'll say that I do like a real grade. Uh, so we were talking about an anime here, uh, uh, this particular anime, uh, level, Villainous level 99. Our main girl, she died. She was reincarnated as the villainous. At age five, she gets her memories back and she realizes, okay, here are the facts that we have been given here. And mostly like voiceover flashback. This character has dark hair, which the demon lord had. And dark haired people are uh, are definitely at their prejudices against them. People are scared of them. She also has dark magic, which not a lot of people have. In the video game, this girl uh, was mistreated, didn't really have a lot of friends, and chose to bully the girl that was the center of attention. And eventually, she becomes she loses herself and becomes the hidden last boss in the game that is harder to beat than the Demon Lord. So our girl's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. 
I'm going to lay low. I'm not going to bully anyone. I'm not going to get in anyone's way. I'm going to just like chill and do my thing. I'm going to try to get through school. Uh, and then she's like, and also I should probably level up and get powerful because my magic is really strong. So if I change the game too much or the, the story from the game too much, I should, I, if I'm strong enough, then I can just defeat the demon Lord on my own. Because the thing that we need to know about uh, our main character in this anime is uh, she wasn't playing. She played this video game. She knows all about uh, the video game that, that this is based on, right? She didn't play it for the story. She didn't play it to date dudes. She played it because our character in her previous life on Earth was a game junkie and loved battle systems. And she loved the RPG stuff. So she played this game for the RPG. She's a hardcore min-max leveler. And we get some scenes of her like going into a dungeon age 10 and like finding the item. She finds an item to uh, a horn that summons monsters so that she could be, be more efficient in killing monsters. Uh, and we later learn that everyone's really shocked when another dude is level 10. Because most people at this school are not that high a level. And our girl realizes, uh-oh, I'm way stronger than that. Because there's an appraisal. And the episode ends with our girl finding out that she's level 99, as the title suggests. Uh, so I have read this manga, um, a Villainous Level 99. Uh, I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the demon lord. I have read this manga. I enjoy this manga quite a bit. I look forward to, um, uh, to, to you know, watching more of it. This is kind of, this is my shit. I like isekai a lot. I am I am partial to this kind of isekai uh, because it is just the goofy ass stuff that I really like. I need seven goes on here. Which is the other side? What what color? What piece is that? Hmm. So seven is this piece here. And then I need four. As always, friends, as I struggle with one side, uh, when we do the, the other leg on Saturday stream, I will not have as many problems because I will have had all of the experience putting this together and I will be in a much better place because I will figure it out as we build it. So as I like try to slide this piece right in the right spot, we'll figure it all out. Um, so that's uh, title spoiling so much. Yeah, I mean, look, the title spoil, the title tells you what it's about because it is based on a light novel. And we've talked about this before. I'm not going to deep dive too deep into that. Light novels are trying to get you to buy the light novel. They want you in the, the in the physical store to walk in, to read the description, and to make the decision that you were going to pick up that book based on the title that you read on the side of the book. Uh, is that, you know, is that great? No, but it is the precedent for it. And I do prefer my anime adaptations to be the same name of the light novel or the manga or whatever it is based on instead of some other weird title that maybe obscures uh, what it is. Um, all right. So what this is seven. But what piece is the other piece that goes on the other side here? What is this piece? Like, I feel like it doesn't say. Like, I know that's seven on here goes in there but I feel like it doesn't say oh e1 okay it was hard to see it it's e1 over here right there is e1 and an arrow and that is not great thank you for the follow uh maverick art guard appreciate that welcome welcome um that was not super helpful here. Uh, okay. Um, but now I know that's got to go here. 
So we got to put the uh, we've got to put our hoses in there, which we will do. But we are going to do basically we're going to do everything but that we're going to panel line everything we can that isn't uh, that doesn't involve the hose because it will be harder to panel line it once we put the hose in to get at everything. Uh, so we're going to do all of the panel lining on the leg that we can do before that. And then we'll do the the uh, the leg or the uh, the hose on the leg, and then we'll put this piece on, and then panel on that, and that'll be easier. Because sometimes it's just easier to do it in a in a slightly different order than they recommend. We're still gonna do it, just not fully. All right, I need D two and D five. So this is D five. Um. What if Dragon Ball was named, I'm the legendary Super Saiyan that never loses the big fight, but I lost my memory as a baby. Uh, so we've played this experiment before. Um, it would be Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball, because it would start with Dragon Ball, right? Uh, and Dragon Ball would be called, um, uh, I'm the, I'm the strongest, oh, mm. I'm the monkey. I'm the monkey king. Uh, but I don't want to take over the world or something to that effect. Um, something like that, perhaps. Uh, the example I always give is Bleach. Bleach, if Bleach had been a light novel instead of just a manga, because Bleach as the name is just a an English language word that the mangaka thought was cool. That's it. There's nothing else about it. There's no other reason for bleach being called that it has nothing to do with the source material or anything he just thought that was cool so he wanted to name it bleach uh but if it was based on a light novel it would be um i'm the strongest shin and uh and i'm not even dead or something to that effect Yu Hakusho would be like, uh, I was a delinquent until I died. Now I'm a ghost detective. That would probably be that title. You know, there's a lot of them that have those shenanigan names. Because yeah, because they want you to buy the light novel and they want you to read the spine of the book because physical sales still happen. Or also, you are looking at a list of new releases on a website, and you have you might have a little bit of art, but mostly you just have the list of new releases, and you're looking at the title. So if you see the title uh, of our second anime that we'll be chatting about tonight, Seventh Time Loop, the villainous enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. Yes, that is a description of the anime that this anime uh, that we are uh, that I'm about to talk about. Is called Seventh Time Loop. The villainous enjoys a carefree life married to her worst enemy. You'd be like, oh, okay. I want to find the One Piece and it'll take me a while to do it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the greatest pirate there. Like the, I'm going to be the world's best pirate, you know, and with my stretchy powers. And then it'll be like, ooh, it's actually a little different. It's not just that. There's other stuff. Okay. Now I have to do the annoying thing, which is I have to. So I'll show you what's going on with this. While I talk about this anime, I'm going to do this. So this is where, this is how our beads come. Our beads here for the hose come on this. Uh, come like this. And then I've already done this on my own as a test. This is a, um, a spring here. And we've got our beads that already came on it, uh, came uh, that I already slid on there. Uh, the longest name thing started because people weren't reading the synopsis in the back anymore. So long convoluted titles begin appearing to get interest from the title alone. Yes, because that's what you see in the spine. Yes, because in kanji, you can fit a lot more than you can in, uh, you know, the Germanic alphabet, uh, uh, like the our English alphabet. You can fit way more uh in kanji so that the large descriptors are to attract people's attentions and now where there's a lot more digital 
uh, you still need to grab people's eye with your long explanation. So what's seven time loop? Well, you kind of know. Anyway, here, no, but I've talked about this manga before. I've enjoyed this manga. Uh, so, uh, our main character, uh, uh, Reese, uh, Reese, uh, it starts off as a, she's a royal knight, which is cool, and she dies fighting the emperor of a neighboring kingdom, Emperor Arnold. And when she dies, don't worry, because she's back to life at age 15. She was 20 when she died. This is now her seventh time being age 15 uh, and replaying this event because she has died six times. She awakens at, um, uh, back as the fiancé of Prince uh, 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 Dietrich, uh, and he is canceling their engagement on false crimes. She, she is not a real villainess. She has been set up by the prince who wants to marry for love, not for responsibility, an age-old story. Um, so, uh, she's not really worried about it uh, because, like, she's done this before, right? She, We find out she has been a merchant, a herbalist, a scholar, a maid, and a royal knight. She has tried everything to survive past age 20. And every time she's died because of this war that will happen in five years. So she's like, I don't have time for this. I got to fucking get going. Maybe she can meet up with some of the people she's known in her past life. Because small things change. And, and her approach has changed. Now, sometimes she's died, like the last time, she's died by the hand of the emperor, by Arnold's hand. Other times, it's just because of the war. Like, oh, she was an herbalist, so she was helping people out. Uh, she was a maid, so she was like she was around people and, and died. But every time it's been the war, she's like, you know what? This time, I'm, I'd like to try just having a quiet, easy life. I'm just going to get as far away from this country as possible and... I know where the war doesn't happen. So maybe I can live past my, my 20th birthday. Uh, but as she's leaving, she encounters Arnold, the man who just murdered her in her previous life. Uh, he's not emperor yet. Um, and she doesn't want anything to do with him. She is just like, yeah, okay, great. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Uh, I have just been, uh, my engagement has been annulled. I am do not need to be here. Peace out. Have a great day. She is ready to go. She's just like not interested. And like any man, am I right? Um, he is instantly smitten with her confidence and her lack of interest in, in him. He is immediately just like, who's this girl? This girl that that isn't even pretending to be uh, nice to me. What's her deal? Uh, you know, this has been enough of delay that she didn't break down and cry. So Diedrich is like, wait, I didn't get the satisfaction. Come back here. Uh, and because he follows her, this is a new thing this time around. Our main character gets to say, uh, uh, just like, oh, oh, this time I get to tell you off. Humiliates him in front of everybody, talks a lot of trash, and then shows sympathy for Lady Marie, his new bride. He's like, I am so sorry that you are wrapped up in this. This is not going to be the fun thing you think it is. Uh, I, I'm sorry that this is what's come to. Uh, she showed pity. Uh, and then, weirdly enough, she leaps into action because she's about to be attacked with a sword. But don't worry. It's just Arnold testing her for some fucking reason. Uh, and, 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 uh, because he could tell from the way she was moving that she knows how to use a sword. So he was testing her. Uh, and then the episode ends with him proposing because he's one of those fucking guys. So there's going to be some romance in this. Uh, and I'll tell you that part of the idea of this story is 
Everything she has done so far has not worked out. The only thing she hasn't attempted is, what if I make Arnold really happy so that he doesn't want to go to war with the world and cause the downfall of my kingdom? Like, what if it's not terrible? So that's kind of the premise of this one. Uh, I think it's animated pretty well. I enjoyed uh, what I saw of it. Uh, this is not like the best story out this season, but I do like it. And, uh, I, I said, I enjoyed the manga, um, and I want to see where it goes, uh, as an anime, uh, because I think it will pass where I've left off in the manga. Probably. I know for a fact that, uh, vil uh, uh, villainous level 99 will, because it, it'll, that'll quickly surpass where I've been in the manga, which is not too far. All right, so let's clean this up. So we slid all our beads off, and now we need to clip it in the right place. So we have to clip it in this place where I can get, so I don't do it in the wrong spot. I got to clip it here. This is just extra. No, get rid of that. And now what I need to do is I need to apply this in here first kind of snap it in place without without this falling apart without this spring causing me any problems i have to fit this piece in here and it should it should snap but it's not which is worrisome because the second part that i need to do is i need to press this other piece down in there so it's not doing what i need to do on this one side but it Maybe it will. Maybe I can get it to do it. Maybe I can get it to do it. Um, I do know some people that have uh, added liquid cement or, you know, uh, or tack to this to keep it in place. I have heard stories of people who've had their uh, things pop out. But yeah, right now, this should, I can, what I can do is I can shave down this a bit here. This should theoretically... Again, theoretically. This should fit in here. Okay, that it did. Great. Now, this other part here has to go in and lock in there. Can I get it to do it? And then we're going to hope that this never falls out and never pops out. we can do is we can pull back the spring a bit here. Nope. Oh, and the other one popped out. So let me try maybe doing it from the bottom first. Nope. <sighs> and then it popped out of the spring, which is great. We love, we love that. We absolutely love that when it pops out of the spring. This, this happening at the end of the stream is probably not the best, but I do want to get it done. Because I'm going to have to do the other one, you know, early on my Saturday stream. Okay, so now I have the bottom in first. I'm going to push it a little bit here. Just try to get in as far as possible. I'll pull back on this a little to get this here to have the most possible likelihood of this snapping in place. And it won't. Uh, so that's the anime that I've been watching. Now it's the part of the stream where I want to hear from you, friends. Uh, what are you? Are you watching any new shows this season? You watching any anime? You watching any other te television? Uh, catching up on uh, movies or books or or whatever? Playing any games? Let me know. Um, I have been. Well, I mean, Tuesday stream. I checked out for the first time. Um, PC Building Simulator 2. I've never played PC Building Simulator 1 or 2 before. Uh, oh, that, that, okay, this locked in place. This looks done. Hopefully, we won't have any other incidents. This looks like it's done now. Um, uh, and I had a really good time with that game. I have played a little bit more. Um, so, uh, of that game, and I would, uh, I I'm definitely going to check out a, a bit more of it because I had. I had a very good time with uh, my time playing PC Building Simulator. Um, 
it it is fun to do those odd jobs to replace some pieces it's satisfying uh to finish those things yeah overall very pleased with my time uh with that and of course i'm playing hearthstone every day because that is my daily driver game that is the thing that i do most days unless i am very busy and just don't have time to play a couple games but i try to do my daily quest in there uh and it is it is still something that i enjoy doing after all this time i still like jumping into uh, hearthstone to play some games that's about all the games i'm playing i mean i'm slowly still playing persona 4 golden um uh with mods and cheats uh through my second playthrough um my new game plus uh i'm thinking i might try to get if i play enough of it i might get to um margaret's dungeon which is the only you can only do it the second time through the game uh it is a new game plus only dungeon and i think i might get there and that might be a goal for my subathon uh which is happening on january 30th i want to say that's the 30th yeah i gotta start making up i gotta make up that uh figure that out but yeah uh saturday january 30th i'm going to be doing a subathon trying to get to 150 subscribers and i think one of my goals like uh, along the way will be showing the bonus dungeon the bonus optional uh, uh margaret dungeon in persona 4 golden uh, I'm still a ways away from getting there, but it's still early enough in January that I, I have to look. I have to look to see how many more hours I need to put into this game, even with cheats and using mods. How much more time do I need to put in this game before I actually get there, before I promise it? But I was trying to think of... Um, oops. Uh, there we go. I was trying to think of uh, stuff to do uh, that day, and that might be one of those things. And it would be low key and, and something I want to play. So I'm thinking I might do that um, show off. And for there will be people watching who haven't seen my streams where I've been running around with those mods. So I think that might be fun. Uh, let me read what y'all have said. Lashberg says, I still need to watch the finale for Spy Family and Bull Buster, let alone new shows. Well, yeah, you got to get in on it. You can't start new shows with until you finish your old shows. I mean, you can, but yeah, get to it, Lashberg. Whatever. Uh, Arista fan says, I've been having a lovely time with Baldur's Gate 3. I played about 15 minutes of the new Prince of Persia demo, and I'm very excited for its release next week. Last week says, I want to try that demo tonight. Uh, yeah, I have heard, this is a weird thing. I heard from a couple different people who really liked it. They were like, look, the story's not great. Uh, the voice acting isn't great, but it does what you want a Prince of Persia game to do. And I'm like, I, I, I mean, I, I, if the mechanics work, that's good. I kind of want my games to have good story and good voice acting. Like maybe I'm, maybe I am not the biggest appreciator of, uh, of Prince of Persia games, I guess. But I'm like, well, it, to me, it probably should have a good story and have good voice acting. Uh, I don't know, but I've seen, I've heard that from like multiple people and I'm like, that doesn't sound great then. I don't know. But I guess if it was like, it has a great story and great voice uh, voice acting, but it sucks to play, uh, I, I, I guess I would be bummed. Um, Ghost Files says, kind of stuck on AC6 for the moment, enjoying the fruits of my weekend labor with the exercise bike in the garage. Nice. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing that. I did that. Uh, I biked yesterday quite a bit. Uh, and also trying to figure out why my browser is messing up my login for streaming services. Uh, yeah, it's probably a plugin. It's probably a plugin in your browser or it could be your cache. Maybe you have to blast your cache, but it's probably a plugin just not agreeing with the streaming services. That's my guess. High Dive loves to log me out. I don't know why. High Dive should not want to log me out, but it does. High Dive always wants to log me out and I hate that. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for tonight's stream. We finished a whole damn leg. We finished the arm and a leg. We got a whole other leg to build. This, sometimes I forget, friends, how detailed master grades are. Because I was like, we'll, I'll definitely get both legs done tonight. 
Uh, and of course, this did not uh, make me mad, which is nice, but uh, there's still time. Uh, but this took a way longer to do. Uh, and the little I saw, I thought the voice acting was good. Yeah, Aristotle, all I can say is these are people that played, you know, they played it for a review, right? So they didn't enjoy it. Maybe your experience may vary, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the progress we made. I just have to remind myself that it takes longer to do this than, uh, than like a high grade, certainly. Uh, so we'll keep working on this kit on Saturday. I hope you come back for that stream. It, it you know, it'll be great. Saturday, 9 PM Eastern. Thank you for everybody that came in on the raid. Thank you for everybody that hung out, uh, for the people that followed, uh, appreciate it. And, uh, we'll wrap things up because we are going to, uh, raid. I'm probably not going to stick around for this raid, but we always end with a raid. Uh, so let me see here. Who is streaming tonight on a Thursday that we want to go hang out with? I uh, got to see, because we always got to go hang out with somebody out there. Got to see what's going on. Uh, we, we got this person, we got that person doing thing. There are people doing thing. Uh, yeah. Let's check back in with Matt Wiggins. Matt Wiggins is still playing Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, uh, Wiggins has a cool crew uh, and is a uh, fun time. So let's go hang out with Matt. Uh, thank you all so much for being here tonight. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. I hope your Thursday into Friday is fantastic. Um, please come back on Saturday as I continue working on this kit. Uh, we'll talk about some other anime, uh, one last new show, I believe, and then some stuff that, you know, in episode two and some ongoing, a uh, nice blend of anime to talk about on Saturday and just general conversation and hanging out. Uh, thanks so much for being here. Hope you have a great rest of your night. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.